Um, so this was Racker's contribution. What he'd done was to look at uh, everted vesicles, inside out vesicles, from the inner membranes of mitochondria in negative stain. And you could see that the surface of those vesicles was, was studded uh, with uh, structures that were referred to as lollipops or mushrooms. Uh, it wasn't known what these were. Uh, David, although it was suggested, it, it was uh, thought that they had something to do with uh, energy conversion. And David Green, at, then at the University of Wisconsin, suggested that this, this structure contained the whole respiratory chain. And, and he drew pictures and published an article in Scientific American showing how all those enzymes I've just shown you were organized into this structure. Um, Racker showed that this was actually the, the, the ATPase uh, complex. But he went on to do beautiful biochemical experiments where he dissociated the knob uh, from uh, the membranes. It was evident in these pictures that the knob was not attached directly to the membranes, it was distanced uh, from it. And this uh, was, the, was the, 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 the idea of the stalk. But he then took the stripped membranes and added the knobs back. So that he showed that the, the knobs were soluble uh, in, in, in aqueous solution and they would hydrolyze ATP uh, but, not, uh, uh, but not synthesize it, of course. And, and he called this factor one uh, ATP hydrolase, F1 ATPase. So he took the knobs and added them back to the membranes and found that he had to add two other proteins uh, to, to, to reconstitute uh, the complete enzyme structure is shown here so that it would synthesize uh, ATP. We now know that the, the proteins that he had to add um, uh, constitute uh, the stator of the enzyme, as I'll show you. So here is, is Paul, and this is Paul's uh, binding change mechanism. So Paul studied uh, the, 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 the mechanism, uh, by, uh, as I've said, by kinetic uh, methods uh, of the uh, F1 uh, knobs that had been released uh, from the membrane and established that there were three catalytic sites and he called them open, loose and tight and from those names uh, you can perhaps deduce that this site had very little affinity for the substrates ADP and phosphate. The, 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 they would bind reversibly to the loose site and the, the third site which he called the tight site had an ATP molecule uh, that was it effectively uh, permanently bound. Uh, but the important point that, uh, of uh, Paul's bi binding change mechanism was that he proposed and demonstrated that the energy requiring step in AT ATP hydrolysis or ATP synthesis was in the interconversion uh, of these three states. So the open, uh, uh, once energy is input, the open state becomes loose and the affinity for the substrates increases. Um, the tight site becomes open and the ATP is released and the loose site becomes tight and the, uh, the, 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 the substrates are irreversibly bound so that uh, ATP can then uh, form in, uh, in this site. Uh, but what was missing from this model was uh, a molecular explanation of how this uh, took place and how, of how the inter interconversion between, sta between states uh, took place. So uh, just to move to a more uh, general uh, consideration for a moment, the, these enzymes, the F ATPases, are distributed throughout eubacteria, uh, chloroplasts, and, and, and mitochondria. Um, and there are related enzymes we now know uh, in, in vesicular structures which use um, ATP uh, to generate uh, proton gradients, for example, um, across... Uh, uh, lysosomal membranes. And uh, there are other enzymes in our care called the A ATPases, which actually, to my mind, are extremely similar uh, to the V type ATPases. And all of these enzymes have a, a common general structure um, and presumably uh, many features uh, in common in their mechanisms. So that today, if we uh, look at what we know about the subunit compositions of, on the one hand of, of bacterial and chloroplast enzymes which are very similar uh, to each other reflecting uh, the, 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 the origin of chloroplasts from uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, the, these are very similar to each other and these are the simplest uh, enzymes. They contain eight or nine polypeptide chains. Some of them have two identical B proteins and in some species 
uh, they're non-identical. Uh, this is the catalytic knob, um, and uh, part of the structure has been re uh, re uh, removed to reveal uh, this structure in the middle, which we now know uh, to be the rotor uh, of, of the enzyme. So the substrates are binding somewhere in this region here, in those three catalytic sites, and ATP molecules have been generated here. We now know that, as I've just said, that this part rotates, and uh, it, it's attached to a ring of proteins um, in, in the membrane made of C subunits. And the C subunits and the this central stalk uh, rotate as an ensemble. And the, the big question, is, uh, which is still completely, uh, is not totally resolved, is how the, uh, how the rotation is generated. We know the direction of rotation uh, during ATP synthesis, and it's the opposite, of course, uh, during ATP hydrolysis. Now, this structure here is the, is the stator uh, of, of the enzyme, um, and, and uh, what it's doing is to link this protein here, A, which I'm going to talk about uh, later on, uh, to the external surface of the catalytic domain, so that they're essentially one structure. So this is the, the A, the, the, the stator, and the, 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 the catalytic part here uh, remains static relative to the rotation of the central part. And de depending on species, uh, the rotation is about 1 to 200 per second. Now, on, on, the, on the right is the, is the mitochondrial enzyme that, that I've studied mostly, not entirely. I've, I've worked on bacterial enzymes originally. Uh, it, it's, some, it, it's very similar in its general structure, particularly in the catalytic uh, part here. But it differs in detail uh, in, in, in the stator, as you can see. Uh, but it, it also has a ring um, and an A protein. And in, in mitochondria, there are other proteins associated with this domain here, uh, which, as far as we know, have nothing to do uh, with, with catalysis and the generation of ATP. So there's greater complexity uh, at, at, in the mitochondrial enzyme than in the bacterial enzymes. Now, you'll notice that uh, the, the number of C, uh, with the C rings, I've given a range uh, of numbers. And that's because, very, very surprisingly, the number of ring, uh, the number of components in the ring, rings differs from species to species. And in, in bacteria, I'm going to come to this point at the end of my lecture, uh, uh, 10 to 15 C proteins uh, have been found uh, in the ring, depending on the species. And that has profound implications that I'll come to. Uh, whereas in, in the mitochondrial enzymes, we've so far uh, uh, observed uh, two ring symmetries, an eightfold ring uh, in, uh, in mammals and a tenfold ring in unicellular uh, organisms. Um, but in principle, uh, the, the, the two enzymes work very similarly, uh, but there are significant differences, and I'll come to those um, in this slide here. So they, they differ somewhat in subunit composition and structure. I think where they differ most is in the, in the way they're regulated, and I'm going to describe that in a moment. And, and the, there are very significant differences uh, in, in the mechanism of, of uh, proton translocation and the generation of ATP. So the, the, the overall structure of the enzyme determined experimentally uh, by cryo-electromicroscopy looks like this. So this is a a model at about 30 angstroms resolution, so uh, rather a low uh, resolution image. Of course, there's no uh, crystallography involved here. This is simply arrived at by averaging uh, single particles observed in vitreous ice. But you can see the salient features of the enzyme, the catalytic part, uh, the, 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 the central stalk that rotates at, attached to the ring uh, here. The, 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 here's the A protein and the other attached proteins, and this is the uh, the stator. So this provides a, 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 a mask, if you like, in which we can build up a detailed structure by solving uh, different domains. And that's what we've done. And I've, I've put together a lot of structural information uh, in, into this film here. So the, the rotation of the ring and, and the rotor uh, is, is impelled uh, by the translocation of protons depicted by these red balls going through the 
the interface between the rotating ring and the A protein. This is why the A protein is so important. It actually provides the access to a carboxylate uh, that sits in the middle of the membrane here. I'll describe that later. And here, here is one of the catalytic sites. There are three, and you can see ADP uh, molecules and phosphate going in, and then eight ATP uh, coming out. This, this shows the, the rotor in greater detail. Now notice that the ring is rotating continuously, uh, but this part is stepping, and that's a very important feature because, and it implies uh, storage of energy in some elastic element in the middle, which then gives the, uh, the, the, the stepping uh, motion. And then this, this is the, the stator, which is largely an alpha helical structure. We think it's rather stiff and rigid, uh, but uh, the, there's probably an, a, an elbow joint uh, at this place here. And its function may be to actually push the A protein against the rotating ring because in order to keep the enzyme coupled, uh, the A protein must remain in intimate association with that uh, rotating ring. Now, the, 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 the rotation, of course, has been um, observed experimentally uh, by attaching uh, actin molecules uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to the central uh, stalk. And you can see the direction of rotation here uh, directly ob uh, observed it, uh, in a, a fluorescence microscope. Um, th th and this is the direction uh, as viewed from the membrane during ATP hydrolysis. It's in the opposite sense during ATP synthesis. Um, I'll just go back again. Um, now, the, 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 the rate of rotation here is clearly not 1 to 200 per second. It's more like 1, to, uh, one uh, every uh, couple of seconds. And the reason for that is that these actin filaments are extraordinarily long in relation to the enzyme itself. It's, if I rep were to represent the enzyme, it's as though I've got a rope half a kilometer long attached to the top of my head. And th 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 this rope slows the rotation uh, down simply through viscous drag. Now, in, in other experiments conducted by Japanese biophysicists, uh, they, re they, they restricted the amount of ATP that was a, a, a available in the external milieu to drive the rotation. And then one could begin to see that uh, the, the, the actin filaments would, would, uh, would stall. And this was the first indication that actually this part of the enzyme was driven by what was actually a stepping motor and was not uh, continuously uh, rotating. We now know that uh, to a first approximation there are 320 degree steps, each of them associated with the production of one uh, ATP molecule and the, 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 the 120 degree steps have been broken down into 90 degree and 30 degree substeps and we still don't properly understand uh, what that means. So we, over, over the uh, past uh, well, it's actually over the past t 10 to 15 years, we've determined many structures of F1 ATPase. And recently, several publications have appeared saying that uh, they're all the same. And so I, I took up the challenge. And we, what we've done is we've, uh, uh, they're not, of course, um, we've compared all of the structures that are available. There are 46 uh, structures available. Now, these are not all independent structures because in some of the crystal uh, some, in, in some of the asymmetric units in, in the crystals that were used, there, were t there would be two or three ATPases. So we've taken all the available structures and we've compared them with each other to examine uh, whether the, the confirmations that we're observing and interpreting in terms of a mechanism were being influenced by crystal lattice contacts. So we aligned them via the top part here that we call the crown. We calculated the center of mass for this part here. And then what we looked at uh, was the, the degree to which um, the, the, the bottom part of, of the rotor, so we've, of course, in the F1 ATPs, we've snapped this part off the, uh, the, the, the ring and the membrane domain. And what we were hoping to, to, to see in these different uh, crystal structures were, uh, the were the central stalk in different uh, positions. So, um, so we've measured the rotation of the foot of the central sto stalk in each of these. And, and then we, we've also looked at, at how the different ATPases are uh, packed in the crystal lattice. So 